Perfect. Yeah, so I wanted to, to focus on uh, something today that I think we can all appreciate um, is the word free. Um, and there are a lot of resources that are available for that low, low price that um, we've been finding very helpful here at Jackson Family Wines. Uh, so I just wanted to take a few minutes to share some of those. Um, so I'll get right into it. I'm going to start with the consumer sentiment tracking. Um, and basically, you know, why, why, are we, why are we even looking at this? Um, well, basically, we want to understand what are consumers thinking? Um, what are they feeling? What are they buying? Um, and three resources that we found very helpful here are Engine, Ipsos, and Deloitte. And those are active links that you'll be able to, to access. I'm going to go through all of these resources very briefly um, on the next few slides. But why are we even looking at this? And, and it's for, for a multitude of reasons. Um, messaging is certainly one. Um, how to get the tone right when we're communicating with our consumers, whether that be um, online, email, et cetera. Um, but also to take a look at, you know, maybe there's some opportunities um, that we can see based on how consumers are, are feeling um, and offer some, some time for some internal brainstorming. So when it comes to the first example, this is Engine. Uh, the reason I really love this one is that it's on a weekly basis and it looks at both how consumers are feeling across the United States, um, but then also looking at by region. And you see that on the left hand side. Then they also drill down into how comfortable consumers are or not comfortable with going to these various locations. Um, and we are starting to see a dip and a return to early June levels. Um, so when we communicate to our consumers, we need to be aware of, of how they're feeling to get our tone correct with them. Um, you'll see here Engine is tracking at an 83% concerned rate and that's gone up and down since they started tracking in March. It's very easy to sign up to these emails and you can get these insights delivered directly to you. Another source is Ipsos. Uh, one reason I like to look at more than one source, of course, is to get corroborating evidence. Um, and here we see their level of concern is at 85%, so very close to what we saw from the previous survey. Um, they also present these resources uh, over time, so you can see how consumer sentiment is going up and down. And on the right hand, we see what they perceive as the uh, risk for outside activities. Um, so you do see that we are, having, are in that V-shape uh, curve, uh, concern uh, bumping up, um, dining in at restaurant. Um, of course, that is, that is quite high as we saw in the previous slide as well. But what we are seeing is that grocery, those stores are doing a really good job in communicating uh, all their different social distancing measures um, and consumers are feeling safer in those locations. If you're interested in a more global perspective, I'd really recommend checking out the Deloitte website. Uh, here you can see the Global Anxiety Index by country. And you see on the right hand side their survey date. So you're able to easily click and see how that's been changing. So if your business is also on a global basis, uh, this is a great resource. And they really drill down in lots of different ways. Um, here is a chart of net spending intention by country. Um, on the left hand side, you have a list of all the countries that they are tracking. The United States is the alphabetically down there at the bottom. Um, and then they look at both less discretionary items and more discretionary items. They do track alcohol, um, but they do not break it out uh, by wine, beer, or spirits. Um, they do break it out though by age group, and that's here on this next slide. So here's the net spending intent for the United States. Uh, this is the age group 18 to 34. Mind you, they do just survey 21 plus, but in the other countries where, where they have a lower LDA, that's included there. Um, and also of real interest is the intended purchase channel. So here you see every, all these categories then looked at by whether it's online, in-store, or mixed. So we see you know, within that younger population, as other data sources have um, alluded to, this is really an, an important channel, of course, for the online and delivery option for the younger consumer. So those are just uh, three quick um, sources that, that you can all um, access. Um, and I'm going to shift over to the on-premise um, 
tracking. Uh, so what's going on there in terms of on-premise? -prem One source that I've been very happy with um, and very eager to share with you is the Data Essential. Um, they've been tracking consumer response um, to on-premise uh, restaurant dining since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and it has, has Nielsen, CGA, um, and Eater. So these are great ways to, to keep on tap with what consumers are thinking about the on-premise experience. Uh, so let's start with Data Central. Uh, and they have, if you go to their website, every single webinar that they do available for download. Um, you can get download it down in a, in a PDF or PowerPoint. You can watch the recording. Um, and so they make it very easy to get uh, information on the on-premise environment. So I'm just going to show a few examples of the type of information that they share. Uh, this is their corona coronavirus traffic brief, where you can understand uh, how many consumers are thinking about purchasing food from a restaurant, and that's tracked over time. Um, over in the middle, you see that dinner is now the top restaurant day part. So that's, of course, very important for, for our industry um, and understanding how we can make sure that wine is an option uh, for order ahead, for to go, for drive through. And you see the statistics down below about the traffic outside the dining room. Um, so that will, that's a continuing opportunity um, for the industry there. You see below, and, and there are other surveys that have spoken to this, I believe Bank of America just put out a, um, a report on this talking about people heading more often to chains, um, and as of now, more larger chains uh, than smaller chains. They also look at consumer sentiment across a variety of different factors. This is this just an example of one of them. Um, but what we're seeing is that consumers are really, really excited to get back to restaurants. We know that there's a pause on that now in many, many states. Um, but what they're really looking forward to is the social socialization. And I love that they took this picture of, of folks cheering with wine um, to emphasize that point. So wine is such an important part of that socialization um, routine and consumers are really looking forward to it. They also look at lots of different categories of how consumers are intending to spend their money. Um, and one thing that's, that's popped up is family meals. So here's the concept of ordering a, a whole meal uh, for that evening, maybe ordering extra for the, for the following evening. Um, and how can we make sure that wine is a part of that? Um, so that's a, another aspect of the on-premise world that um, may have more potential um, for wine sales going forward. Nielsen CGA, so this is part of the, the Nielsen uh, research uh, group. They do weekly updates that you can sign up for on their website. It rotates between consumer and sales data. Here's the latest consumer data that they, that they shared. Um, and what I find really um, uh, with an with a optimistic view is what consumers are looking for drinks when they do order takeout and delivery. And, um, to much of our, I'm sure a lot of people are smiling, seeing that red and white wine are the number one and number two on that list. So again, more opportunity for wine in that arena, as we were mentioning. And then finally, when it comes to, to on-premise, I'm sure a lot of you, folk, you know, follow Eater, um, but I just wanted to remind you that this is a great source if you are looking into specific local trends um, on premise. They do track restaurant closings and openings throughout the country um, and then and also around the world as that post down below notes. Uh, so just a great resource to keep up uh, on what's going on from an on-premise perspective. And then let's move into to off-premise and, and e-commerce. And, and uh, we know that Steve just showed some really great data as well. Um, so that's a wonderful, wonderful resource um, that he's made available. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight two other resources that look at how shopping behavior is changing and what channels are growing. Um, and two that I just wanted to highlight briefly are Supermarket News and Kantar. Um, supermarket news, if you don't already subscribe to it, uh, doesn't talk just about supermarkets, um, 
but also just uh, general retail uh, consumption patterns, shopping behaviors. Um, and what we see here is an article that they shared uh, highlighting the Food Marketing Institute's recent data on changes in where and how and who grocery shops. So we know from, from this information and other information as well that consumers are spending more on each visit. So basket ring is going up. Um, and they are narrowing their range of items purchased. Um, They're also shopping at fewer stores, so they don't wanna go um, and have maybe further risk if they go to additional stores. Um, and 28% saying that they are shopping more online when they do their grocery shopping. Um, and kind of wrapping up the, the, the data sources I wanted to introduce you to today is Kantar. And they do a lot of great research into how these shopping shifts may or may not last. Here's an example from one of their reports um, saying that shoppers are really looking to continue their, their behavior. So um, we know that it takes about two to three months for a behavior to change for, for us humans. Um, and now that we're in, in August, coming up on August, some of these behaviors have really started to sink in. Um, so we see that curbside delivery, in-store pickup, home delivery, these are all behaviors that consumers are getting used to and that they look forward to continuing um, once the pandemic slows down.